does hunting or shooting mean to you? For Tim Pilbeam, it's a rucksack, a rifle and a chance to breathe in a new experience. We're exploring the beautiful Croatian coastline and countryside looking for a trophy mouflon, an animal that clings on to the unforgiving rocks of the Dalmatian Riviera. And we are after roe and boar in a vast hunting area filled with flower meadows and forests. We moved inland about uh, an hour and a half from where we were on the, on the coast. Very, very different terrain. Just look at it, this is just sort of uh, woodland, rolling mountains here. None of the hard rock we had down the coast. It's a very different time of stalking. Uh, we're on row this morning. We're probably a fraction late at the moment, so we need to get in there pretty quickly. So it's a very different skill set here, so very much relying on our guides to take us around and hopefully find a, a nice row. So we need to get going. Tim has arranged the trip through Artemis hunting, and our young guide is Pavele. He and his father Mario know every inch of this strange landscape. Sometimes it looks like home, other times the Serengeti. During the winter they feed the boar using this lofty maize dispensing unit. Dinner is served at the same time every evening. So they put corn in there, yes. and it turns around. Yes. Feeds the boar twice a day, once a day, once a day, once a day. Once a day. six o'clock. And you have these all around the, around the estate. How many of them do you have? Uh, one every, I see three got the one. Oh, okay. So you've got the high seat over there. Yes. 30 metres away. That's your feeding spot. Yes. Pavle spots a row and changes up from his normal sedate style to a jog to get a better look. The deer and the boar are naturally timid. They have more than a man with a Zara 101 in 308 to worry about here. It's gone, but we still have a few hours before storms are forecast to arrive. 20 minutes later, having worked through a broadleaf woodland, Pavle gets Tim on the sticks. A young buck is grazing out from the cover. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> there you go. Look at my stalking. This, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is like stalking in England. Absolutely stunning place. The tall grass, it's so nice to see all these flowers, variety of flowers, and see the road here just moving in between the trees. It's, it's, it's beautiful. The heads aren't any great size here because of the local mineral levels. This one is a good animal to take. I had a wonderful stalk this morning. Uh, we were a bit late coming in, but we had this sense that uh, Paolo just knew, knew that something was going on because as we came across through, through the uh, open land here, we saw one row, and that just jinxed away, I don't know why, but, but he just was very, very quiet, very purposeful what he was doing. Beautiful bit of stalking down next to the woods, we came through the woods here, and uh, came up with this open area here, you can see it's a beautiful wildflower meadow. And there was this uh, young buck just, uh, just pulling some marking his territory. But uh, very, very gentle stalking, just very careful movements, he just knew exactly what he's doing. Just phew, up there, go. It's just, uh, it's very, very not unusual, but this is a very nice way of stalking, very gentle. And it's had a lovely feeling about, about the whole of Croatia in some ways. It's just such a beautiful country. And uh, this is just a, another way of, of uh, another form of road stalking within different countries. It's, it's not all about in the UK. You know, it's a beautiful place to, to be. Like in many European countries, the animal is honoured and Tim finds out a little more about the local wildlife. You were saying that um, in, in, in Croatia, the deer have predators. Yeah. And they are very, very timid, so are very hard to stalk. But what hunts the deer? They're really shy because uh, we got uh, a lot of predators. We got the wolf, we got the bear, we got the lynx, the gold shakal. We got all predators what we can have. Wow. And the wolves are really shy for that. But so the wolves, do, do they hunt uh, as a pack? Yes, one was like driven oh, and wow. another was... Yes. And have you seen that? Can yes, you? once time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yes. So, lynx, wolf and bear to contend with. That will keep you on your toes. Tim's next challenge is to use his Harkila rucksack to carry out the young row. Now, I have not done this before. 
So we're just trying one of the new Arkela rucksacks out, which carries a, a road here. Uh, I think normally one would gut it first and then put it in here, but uh, Paolo wants to uh, take it back to, to the, the car and then uh, deal with it then. And I say we... <coughs> oh, hello. <laughs> That's my friend. <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't want to disrespect the animal too much, but... <laughs> this is not a typically British thing to do, but there's a first time for everything. If you're on your own, it's a very efficient way of extracting an animal this size. This trip is as much about the experience as the hunting. We are asked to get a fire going to cook lunch. For this trip, Tim has a Zoa 101 with a Zeiss V8 scope on top. It means he's comfortable shooting 300 metres across a valley or 100 metres in a meadow. But with glass like this, you need to establish a workflow. Very, very versatile optics we've got here. I've got 150 metres zero, and the reason why I've gone for that is I'm shooting Ufron from probably 100 metres to maybe 350 metres, so a huge range there. Most of the row here, probably 60 to 70 metres, and then a bore here would be probably about between 30 and say 70 meters. So I've got quite a wide range of, uh, of uses for this. But be very careful. The more things you can adjust, the more things can go wrong. You must have a discipline that every time you finish using a rifle, you've you made that shot, wind it back to zero. Do it every single time. Otherwise, it will catch you out. Oof, it's done. Same with your windage, if you want to use your windage. And also I do the same thing with my parallax. I generally keep my parallax around about 150 all the time. If I'm shooting beyond 200 meters, I'll probably tweak it a wee bit. But please, please, when you're using these target turrets, make sure you always wind them back. Back to lunch and we're expecting some fresh roe liver, but instead Mario returns with some home dry cured pork belly. Some is eaten raw, some sliced and cooked over the fire. For Tim, this is what it's all about. This is such a tasty bit of meat. This is beautiful. For more information about hunting in Croatia, please visit artemishunting.com.